What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Independent Waters. I am your host, Mikey Manfredi, and joining me, as always, is the other host of Indie Waters, Zach Batista. Zach, how you doing, my man? It's fucking cold outside, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm in my room, and I just, I'm just cranking my heater now, because I was sitting here just re-looking over the match before we did this, and I was like, man, it is really cold. I was like, what the, what the hell? Yeah, I went to the store before. I was wearing a jacket, a flannel, and a shirt underneath, and I was still cold. <sighs> oh, my God. I was like, damn, yo. What what happened? Winter mm-hmm. came at us with a vengeance. Oh, God. I, I remember, like, during this week, I was running, and, like, a gust of wind hit me in the face. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's oh, no. New Jersey winter. There's the Oh, God, oh, no. <laughs> That's I swear I'll say this to everyone. If there's anything that'll make me hate winter weather more, it's the wind. I can sit and chill like cool weather and I'll be fine. But the moment the wind hits me in the face, I'm like, okay, you can get out now. I'm like, we're yeah, we're here the, a bit. the wind is easily the worst part. Uh, mm. It's just it makes it so much worse. <laughs> Who likes being punched in the face by by cold ass air? No one. Nobody does. No one. <laughs> it's just like you walk outside and you're like, oh god. It's just like, oh god, why? Yeah. All right, uh, I don't have a good transition here. <laughs> so why don't a... we get right? Why don't we get right into it, Zach? What was your first match of the week? Actually, who started off? Let's talk. Let's talk let's about see. that. Let's see. I had. Last let's see. I'm trying to remember here. So, um, I believe, I yes, I believe I went first because I had the Ring of Honor match that I got lost midway through it and then regained my balance, if I recall correctly. Right. All right. Uh, I'll start. I'll kick us off then. If, if we right. started last week. Uh, I'll kick us off with uh, a match from Women's Wrestling Revolution. We got Rachel Ellering taking oh. on Skyler. Oh, thank God. Oh, no, you don't even know. I had a match from that promotion, too, and I thought you were going to say my match. I was... <laughs> there was a... Listen, there was a lot of matches from that promotion. Oh, God, I literally was like you that one week where I was like, oh, God, if he picks this match, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, we, boy. Have come, we have come close to picking yep, the same match before my accident. Close. All right, continue now. All right, so I got Rachel Ellering versus Skylar. Uh, right. This match is great. Uh, I I was I was pretty surprised. I don't think I, I've heard of Rachel Ellering a little bit. Mm-hmm. I've never seen like a Rachel Ellering match, but I've heard the name, so I was like, oh yeah, sure, let's check this one out. Uh, and it was pretty good. These two uh, had some great solid, like some solid chain wrestling to start off with. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of reversals, a lot of back and forth in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, really, really good like technical show in the mm-hmm. beginning makes sense um uh ellering however takes control of this match basically the whole time <laughs> like ah uh there's skylar like keeps trying to get bursts of offense in but just cannot like mm. no matter what skylar does ellering is just there with a the counter for it gotcha um there's one point where Skylar's on the ground and she's throwing forearms at Ellering and Ellering is just no selling them. And then Skylar stands up and mm-hmm. Ellering just rocks her with a forearm and knocks her off balance. Ooh. Uh there was finally a point where it looked like Skylar was gonna take control where uh she hulked up a little bit after taking a taking a hit and then yeah. they, they end up hitting a double clothesline. Mm-hmm. Uh, which knocks them both out. But Skylar is the first to her feet, and she starts getting some offense in finally. Nice. Uh, but then, <laughs> but then of course, uh, Ellering reverses it again. Mm. Uh, she like like Skylar finally starts getting in like some speedy moves, very high flying, like like zipping around the ring, very lucha esque, right? All right, right. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, then there is a point where she goes to the corner. And as she's going to run out of the corner, uh, Ellering catches her with an STO. Mm. Uh, and that catches her with an STO, drops her, and hops up on the, the turnbuckle and does, like, a spinning leg drop. Oh, yes. I think I actually uh, recall her. Uh, I, I think that's, like, a, I know it's a signature move of hers, if I recall mm-hmm. correctly. Continue. Yeah. So so she hits, she hits that spinning leg drop and, once again, takes control of the match. She gets, uh, she she gets she she goes to get Skylar into submission, but Skylar ends up getting a, a cool submission in where she's like, she like has she's like upside down like mm-hmm. on her head and she has like a chin lock in. Ooh. On Ellering and Ellering like desperately crawls and like gets like a toe on the rope, and gets oh a rope my break. God. It was so close. I thought I thought it was gonna be like a like I thought Skylar was gonna reverse and just be get like a tap out win out of nowhere. Mm. Uh, but like I said, Ellering does manage to escape and make it to the ropes. Uh, 
then after that, uh, Skylar hits a huge meteora, mm-hmm. which which Ellering then kicks out of the pin for, which was crazy. I didn't expect that. She was literally on the top rope, and she got like mad air and hit like a big meteora, Ooh. and I was like, "Whoa, this one's over!" And then it wasn't, and I was <laughs> like, "Dang, that's cool." <laughs> Uh, there and then there's one point where they're uh, running the ropes and Skylar gets a uh a big she gets like she hits like one of her big finishing moves. Uh, there was one point uh where Rachel Ellering ends up locking in like a Fujiwara on uh Skylar. Okay. And then uh Skylar gets out of it. They hit a big move. Uh, Ellering hits a big move on Skylar after she escapes. Goes mm-hmm. for the pin. And then, as she's going for the pin, she gets to two. Skylar then reverses the pin into her own pin. Ooh. Rolls up, gets a really tight cover, and gets the one, two, three out of nowhere. Oh, dang. Uh, getting a victory over Ellering. Uh, it was a pretty good match. It was, uh, like I said, it was a lot of Ellering taking control, but, uh, in the end, Skylar just, just outfoxed her a little bit, you know? Fair enough. Uh, even like like commentary was basically playing up the whole time. They're just like, yeah, I don't know how Skylar's gonna gonna get out of this one. Ellering's been pretty in control this whole time, mm-hmm. and then Eller and then Skylar just got like that that really quick, really sneaky uh, 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 roll up and ended up winning the match. Nice. <laughs> and the announcers were like, oh man, Ellering must be disappointed with that one. She basically had it in the bag. <laughs> I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah, just keep rubbing salt just in the room. Rub that huh? in her face. Just rub it right in there. <laughs> um anyway, this match was good. Uh I liked I liked it. It was like not super exciting, but it was kinda cool. Like there was some there were some good parts. Uh mm-hmm. I give it a meh. It was good. Fair enough. Definitely definitely not unwatchable. Definitely interesting. Uh definitely not a waste of time. That's always so what you if, look forward to for a match. As long as yeah. it's not a waste of time. Uh yeah, it was it was it was solid. I give it a meh. Uh, go check it out. It is Rachel Ellering taking on Skyler from Women's Wrestling Revolution. Nice. All right, uh, Zach, why don't we get into your first match of the day? All right, so what I was gonna do my Women's Revolution wrestling match, but instead I'm gonna go with another match that I decided to pick because it is more of a topical pick. Okay, so. For the context here, for those of you that keep up with mainstream WWE, though it's not happening now, at one point in time, there was a chance we were going to get Roman Reigns versus Adam versus Pierce. Adam, Ro- Adam Pierce. Adam Rose. Adam Rose. <laughs> no. Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce. Yes, I remember this. And I was one of the people who was actually quite excited for the idea. I was like, oh, damn, like this could be mm. a pretty good match, I think, because I'd heard you know good things about Adam Pierce, and then... As we all know, like I think it was two weeks ago now, that did not become a thing. It is now Kevin Owens versus Roman yeah. Reigns, which I'm excited to watch. Yes, regardless, that I, that I saw. Yeah, with um, I saw. I, I don't watch them to be much, but I saw that clip mm-hmm. on Reddit of uh, Pierce getting Roman Reigns to sign the contract. Yep, and then like walking up to the ramp and being like, "Oh, I'm not going to be in this match. I gotta. I, I'm pr- to I'm prone change. to injury. Yeah, yeah." So I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch an Adam Pierce match. I heard he had a All great right. run. All and right. I ended up picking on his YouTube channel that I found this Adam Pierce versus he Adam He has his Page own YouTube channel that runs? At Ring of Honor. It is. It's kind of like, um, it's like Matt Tremont. It's like a wrestler that like posts like, like videos of like their matches that they put up there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. So first things first about this match. This was his last match in Ring of Honor. And, uh, the camera quality for this match is. Not the best, not because of the actual filming, but more so the fact that it it looks like he, he like just recorded it off of a TV screen. Get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I hate so, that. It's not too bad. I okay. I watched the whole thing, so I I literally watched it just for that and that alone. And I have to say, I was not disappointed with this match at all. Okay, so let's hear about it. All right, so this match, the story for this match going into it is that this faction at the time of Ring of Honor, because I didn't watch mainstream, I didn't watch Ring of Honor during this time, which I assume was its heyday, because of mm-hmm. the people that are in this faction, I could, or one of the members at least, they're called the Decade, and they're they're basically they set this match up between Adam Pierce and a young, super like super like much less experienced Adam Page. Sad, sad 
not what? millennial yet cowboy yes exactly like i saw adam page and i was sitting here and i was like wait a second I'm like is that fucking adam page because i thought i misread well, i guess it. i guess technically he's still millennial yeah because <laughs> i had i had misread it as cole for some reason i saw it i looked at the title I was like oh my god that is adam page and i was like holy shit he looks young as hell i, I then learned i'm pretty sure this is like three years into his start as a wrestler I think. oh sweet like this is early as hell adam page so they go off with saying they basically hired Pierce to teach him a lesson and to beat some respect into him, basically, because he's a, a young up-and-comer. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, hey, Pierce, get him. Pretty <laughs> much, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, one of the managers is on commentary for this match, and he's a douche the whole time. But that's kind <laughs> of the point, because Paige has a bunch of people who are his, like, managers slash in the faction. You've got okay. one tall, like, balder dude who is, uh, who's di- clearly the one that he likes. You can see that before the match. You have the one that's on commentary who he very clearly does not like, but he's his coach slash mentor, so he deals mm-hmm. with it. And then you have a third guy who I'm pretty sure is not a manager, but is a member in the faction, but he didn't really do much in the match, so yeah, I don't, I got, I don't got much on him. So the match starts okay. off, Pierce goes for a handshake. And he's, like, telling the crowd to, like, be quiet. And, like, I don't know what they were trying to say because, like, the audio was kind of iffy on this part. But he's, like, basically shushing them, right? Yeah. And Paige is hesitant to do so. But eventually Paige is like, all right, yeah, sure. He, like, hesitantly shakes his hand. And Pierce immediately punches him in the face because Pierce in this whole match is an obnoxious-ass heel. And I love me some obnoxious <laughs> heels. So you know I was a fan of this. Pierce just went, yeah, come on, shake my hand. Nope. Punch you in the face, dumb bitch! How dare you punch? How dare you shake my hand? Why would you even take that offer, you idiot? Yep, Pierce is all over Paige at this point, just beating the shit out of him, raining just these meaty ass strikes in him. Because I gotta say, Pierce has some good ass strikes, dude. Yeah, they're all great looking in this match, pretty much. Okay. He's just abusing Paige in the corner at this point, and there, well, there's a point where the refs like tries to maintain like control and like being like, "All right, stop, L- get off of him in the corner, so we can actually." have some breathing room and like Pierce stops and like stares the ref down and the ref's like I'm the ref dude like <laughs> like what are you and from this I'm, point I'm on, the ref what are you gonna do exactly and from this point on there's this noticeable tension between the two because Pierce very clearly does not respect this ref nor the crowd or anyone really outside of the guys that hired him and even then it's iffy at best <laughs> Even then, it's shaky. Even then, he's kind of like, uh, I do what I want. And, like, I, I, like, I'll do what I want, but I agree with these guys' way of thinking, so I'll listen to them and all that. So, moving on from this, Paige eventually is actually able to get the upper hand here by using the momentum, like, Pierce Irish whips him, he uses the momentum, and he hits with a series of his classic moonsault drop kicks, where he mm-hmm. drop kicks and moonsaults. He has, like, three of these, I think. He's able to... Pierce then is able to shove Paige into the corner because it's very clear in this match that, Paige, that Pierce is a much bigger and much stronger man than uh, Paige is. Yes. He goes to run at, at uh, Paige. Paige boots him. He then uh, Pierce then comes right back at him and he ducks out of the way when uh, Pierce Got comes it. to like jumping slam him. Paige then uses this opportunity to get to the, dr- the top rope as like Pierce like stumbles out of the corner and drop kicks him, which causes Pierce to roll out of the ring. Which then leads into Paige doing his classic signature shooting star press off the apron onto Pierce. The crowd popped really hard for that, and I did too because I love that thing. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I also popped hard. It was great. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Can't confirm. It was great. Unfortunately, for this point, Paige kind of takes a bit too long to continue going after pa- Pierce because he's like, "Oh man, that was that was awesome!" And he goes over and he picks Pierce up, and Pierce just just launches him into the barricade like sends him flying into it page sells it great <laughs> would you say yeet yes i, I <laughs> would i'm trying to uh spice up my vocab here but he come he is yo into the corner but into that barricade basically <laughs> i love i love the word yote 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 is the yeet. past term of yeet <laughs> yes <laughs> And then at one point, you can hear the rep, the other side of the crowd going, throw him over here. Throw him over here, basically. I'll catch him. So Pierce <laughs> somebody holds up like Somebody holds up, like, the sign with, like, the bullseye mm-hmm. on it. Like, throw throw cowboy here. Exactly. <laughs> he's not even a cowboy at this point, honestly. He doesn't even have, like, any, like, of his cowboy gear. And he just has, like, a pair of black trunks on. Not even, like, his, like, chaps or anything like that. Not even the bandana. Damn. Yeah, like, it's it's a young Adam Page. So <laughs> throw, throw sad yeehaw men here. <laughs> So Pierce goes, oh, yeah, sure, I'll definitely do that. And, like, you can tell, like, how much charisma he's got. Like, oh, yeah, totally. And then as he's doing it, 
he just turns the thing around and he just throws him right back into the same barricade and basically flips the crowd off. I'm just like, okay. I'm like, it's just like the way he does it. He's like, yeah, you fucking idiots. Do you think I was going to actually listen to you? <laughs> idiots, come on. Who do you think I am? Dude, he gets into the ring. He does like the Adam Cole Bebe signal. And then he mm-hmm. just, and then he's like, yeah, no, fuck off, whatever. And then some guy's like trying to, I think the dude's trying to heckle him because he looks at some dude. He just kind of like shoots his, like he like, you know, like when someone sticks their finger on their nose and just shoots snot at someone. He does that towards a dude and he does like the suck it sign to some dude in the crowd. And I'm like, damn. Man, that, honestly, Adam Pierce is somebody whose bad side I would never want to get I was on. like, no respect for this crowd. And I loved it. I was like, this is so over the top and just obnoxious and I love every bit of it. It's awesome. I think yeah. at one point, too, at this point, when he's beating the shit out of Paige on the outside, the ref's trying to tell him to get into the ring, and he rolls sideways into the ring, like, halfway, looks at the ref, and then does, like, the, does, like, where the underarm, like, go fuck yourself thing, you know, where, like, you take oh, your, yeah, 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 you, I, like, I know, the, yeah. Yeah, you like, hit like, your, bi- you, like, hit your bicep, but, yeah, like, you hit your bicep with your yeah. forearm, like, that, he does that to the ref, like, he literally didn't give a shit, like, his character didn't. <laughs> Adam mm. Pierce is just flipping every, pe- flipping people off in every way he knows how. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, he's gonna do, like, the Italian, like, Exactly. <laughs> the little hand under the chin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, back to the match. While he's taunting this fam, uh, Paige actually is able to get up. And before, and uh, he takes the opportunity to actually start to make a little bit of a comeback here. Like, he starts to, like, chop, pier- like, hit, hit Pierce up, get up. He starts to really gain some momentum. And then Pierce just drop kicks him in the face. And okay. then he just, Pierce just dismantles Paige in the corner here. Just beating the shit out of him. Just dissecting this man then he hits him with a mean neck breaker in the middle of the ring and we get to this cool spot where pierce is pinning page right he has okay. one hand on the mat and he's got one hand in the air and he's counting as the ref counts he's going one two and of course page kicks out and he goes three nice. and he then starts to argue the ref at, with the ref here and i thought it was just hilarious the idea if he's like oh yeah i'll just count it out with you guys and then he just doesn't go there and he's like what the fuck and he goes through he's what like the hell? it's three and the ref's like no it's two He's like, you don't, he's like, no, 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 I counted to three. He's like, and I, yeah, exactly. It's like, this bullshit. And as they're <laughs> arguing, Paige gets to the ropes, and there's, like, a point where, like, he's hanging on, like, the middle rope, and every time mm-hmm. Pierce goes over to try to get him, he, like, kicks him away with his legs. Okay. Eventually, though, Pierce does get up and pick him up, and uh, he throws to Irish whip Paige, he grabs, Paige grabs onto the ropes, and he elbows Pierce in the face when he goes at him. And then as he runs to go, Pierce just hits this huge spine buster on him. Looked okay, great. Nice. And then once again, <laughs> oh my god, Pierce and the ref just start to argue again. I forgot what they were arguing about for even for this point, but there's just, he's just really not having this ref shit, even though the ref's not having his shit at all. <laughs> Pierce is just like, I'm gonna, no matter what happens, I'm going to mm-hmm. yell at this ref. Honestly, it's probably just the fact that Paige kicked out after it, and he's just like, what are you doing? You Can you do your job? Talk, just count faster. Come on. Exactly. And at this point, you can actually see Paige like slowly get up behind him. And when he finally does turn around and see him, he goes, "Oh shit!" And he tries to punch. <laughs> uh, him. Oh no! And Paige actually ducks it and then pops off by hitting his. He just starts to just beat the shit out of him. All the strikes he's been taking all match, all the punches, he just gets all of it back and then some with this comeback. He then Irish right. with Pierce, and he tries to flapjack him, though, and Pierce then picks him up and then just punches him in the face. Except then, Paige gets his co- uh, revenge on him because Pierce tries to Irish with him and hits him with a close- and try to hit his- tries to hit him with a clothesline. Mm-hmm. But Paige instead ducks it and then hits him with another moonsault dropkick. And at this point, I should point out, the commentary, which is the, the douchebag manager on commentary, because that's he- that's- he's clearly the asshole in the group, it's just kind of like, yeah, he's just doing all this like fancy flippy shit, and he can't be doing that against Pierce. He's just gotta beat him up. He can't be. Fu- he's gotta be a man and beat this guy because that's the whole story of this match. <laughs> the Page is doing like not old school like stuff. Like the, their whole thing about the decade is from this, from what I gathered, is that they're trying to raise up the next generation of stars in Ring of Honor by teaching them the old ways of like you know just like groundwork, classic wrestling stuff. And mm-hmm. Page is not entirely that. If you can't tell from the fact that the few spots he's had here that he popped off were, like, big, like, huge momentum spots compared to, like, Pierce just beating the shit out of him. Very well, might I add. Anywho, I digress. Page then goes to mount Pierce in the corner. He starts to punch him in the head repeatedly, but he keeps looking for the approval of that one coach I mentioned a while back that he liked. 
Like, there's a point where, like, he, like, he gets off the turnbuckle. He's like, yeah, you like that? And then he turns around, and Pierce just pokes him in the eye <laughs> when he goes after him. <laughs> Boop. The camera didn't catch it, though, but Paige sold it, so it was fine. Yeah. And then Pierce then, Pierce then goes to the top rope, and Paige then crotches him, and then hits <laughs> a massive superplex onto him, which is okay. awesome, because Pierce is a huge lad. <laughs> yeah, he is. And after this, Paige goes over to Pierce, and then uh, Pierce throws him over the apron, over onto the apron, and then punches him in the face. And then Hangman actually goes for the buckshot lariat, but it's not called that or anything. And commentary didn't even make a big deal out of it. And I was like, wow, this is... If I was in it's, such a, it's such a cool move, though, still. Oh, it's so good. I love the, fu- I love the buckshot lariat. But anywho, Pierce ducks he didn't, that. He didn't have the cowboy theme yet, so the buckshot Didn't have the sense. cowboy theme, didn't have the power behind it, didn't have the speed, because Pierce just ducked it. And the, and the the flipping over the top rope Larry it just didn't just didn't roll off the tug. Nope. <laughs> and like even though Hangman's able to form him in the face form him in the face after this not like lose it. Pierce doesn't really let him get this get to him because as Hangman's going to bounce off the ropes, Pierce is already like matching him. So when Hangman turns around to see him like running at him, he just hits him with like a JBL like uh clothesline from hell esque Larry where he just turns Page inside out, like destroys Ooh, him. Rough. And after this, buddy. this is where I realized that this is probably the heyday of Ring of Honor because Roderick Strong shows up on the entrance ramp. Roderick Strong? Yeah, dude. Like, I was like, holy shit. I was like, Roddy was still. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, that means, like, Cole and fucking um, Fish Man, that's, and O'Reilly that, are probably still here, too, then. That's the Ring of Honor I want to watch where it was like, where it was like. Kevin Steen, Adam Cole, Roger Strong, Adam Adam Page, El Generico. The whole <laughs> like that's bam. that's what I want to watch. Give me that all day. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I learned, basically, is that Strong is part of this faction, and I was like, this makes sense based on like you know the whole like classic wrestling maneuver, and Strong is the Messiah of the backbreaker, and just he's amazing at wrestling. But this isn't about him, so uh, maybe someday Strong. Pierce mm-hmm. acknowledges this by saying, like, this is now where Paige is going to die. Like, he says, this is where he dies now. And I was like, okay, well, that's good. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> the, the guy, like, the top bosses for Ring Rider are like, no, 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 we just wanted you to teach him a lesson. Then please don't kill him. <laughs> Tough love, man. They got to learn sometime. They die <laughs> now. <laughs> now, now they just die. We just kill, we just kill people who don't learn their lesson in time. Mm-hmm. So this is where we lead into the finish of the match, where as Pierce is picking him up, Paige is, like, staring a hole in Roderick, because I assume the two of them are, like, the two young guys in the faction, so he's not trying to be outdone by Roderick, who's probably in the good graces of the douchebag heel manager. I wouldn't imagine. So, Paige gets up on his feet. Pierce is, is like, kind of, like, not, like, paying as much attention to him, because he doesn't see that he's staring a hole in Roderick, and the moment he looks back at Paige, Paige just slaps the taste out of his mouth. It's the first time he's probably, like, in this match, like, straight up like disrespected Pierce like where he wasn't like trying to make a comeback and Pierce mm-hmm. is infuriated by this so he just kicks Paige in the gut and goes for like a power bomb mm-hmm. but Paige then quickly pulls his feet out and then just flips over on top of him and actually rolls him up for the win here ooh nice and Pierce is beside himself here that he just lost like that yeah I bet but that's and... a big win for Paige though Mm-hmm. oh it's huge so then it goes to Pierce offering his hand for a handshake and it's a callback to the first match because he's goading Paige into going to this handshake because Paige is like I don't know and he's like come on you are my respect and the other manager is like the douchebag human manager like yeah shake his hand the moment he shakes his hand Pierce just punches him in the face and starts kicking the shit out of him <laughs> what are you gonna learn <laughs> that is literally what the manager basically says he's like you were so close to learning the lesson but you just don't understand because you're an idiot <laughs> instead of it being like it's like, instead of how many times you're teaching this lesson, old man, it's like, how many times you're teaching this lesson, young man? Basically, yeah, it's saying, like, the crowd means nothing. Don't disre- don't re- be respectful. Be disrespectful. Do what you do, and basically be a heel. Yeah. And Paige doesn't leave them here, but I assume this leads up to something, because Paige begrudgingly leaves with them, like, even holds the ropes open for Pierce, who's, like, chatting it up with Roderick Strong and, like, the douchebag heel manager, while the nice manager leaves the ring with him. The nice manager. The nice guy, the guy who Paige clearly likes and has like a soft spot for Paige. Gotcha. And that's where the that's where it ends. All right, this all match right. Is awesome. I like it. I it give, sounds like it. It sounds like it's pretty good. Yeah, I give this match a high meh. Okay. Didn't give me that feeling of all like right. a markout match, but like I really enjoyed the story they told here with the commentary and all that. I enjoyed Pierce was great. 
I honest, I'm not surprised that the man was a is a five time NWA champion and held that belt for quite some time. Like mm-hmm. he is fucking awesome in the ring, and it just makes me even sadder that I didn't get to see him versus Roman Reigns. But you know what? I'll take Kevin Owens any day. I'll always take Kevin Owens anytime, He's anywhere. So good. I love Kevin Owens. One of these days, I have to pick the uh, El Generico versus Kevin and Steen uh, ladder match from Ring of Honor that everyone knows about. I just want to watch oh, yeah. that. I've never seen I that think match. I, I, I watched that for Indy 500, I think. Ooh. The I've ladder seen war? The match. I know the match that ever. I know the spot everyone knows where he basically just packaged pile drivers and threw like three ladders, but I don't know the actual match itself. Yeah, the match is obviously awesome. Like, how can how can it be bad? Like, I think I'm pretty sure I watched that for for Indy 500. I remember I remember that match, and it was uh yeah, like you said, it, it's everyone knows it, and it's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. I have Kevin Kevin Owens and now and Sami Zayn. I guess yeah, sorry, Kevin Steen and El Generico are two very good wrestlers. Very good. Uh yeah, so let's let's move on to my second match of the of the day here. Hit me with it. What you got? All right, my next match this week was from Beyond Wrestling, uh, an event called Two Weeks Notice, oh. and we have Lee Moriarty. All right, taking on Wheeler Yuta. Wheeler Yuta. I feel like Lee Moriarty. We watched, I know, but Wheeler. We watched. Familiar. We watched a Wheel, uh, Wheeler match. Uh, Wheeler Yuta and uh, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. Ah, okay. Yes, this is why the names are familiar. Versus Violence is Forever, right? Yes, yes, that is yeah, correct. Yeah, we watched I, I, we watched the, we watched I, I just looked at his picture. I remember this man. Yeah, 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 we've seen Wheeler in action. Yes, I have seen Wheeler. Um, All right. This match is 10 minutes, is like 11 minutes long. Okay. But boy, howdy. Oh, man. <laughs> that's what you know. This did they, so did they squeeze a lot in? When he hits you with the boy, howdy, that's what you know this is boy, a wild howdy. ride. Adam Page walked in and he says, boy, howdy. <laughs> This match is insane. It starts off with some absolutely bonkers chain wrestling. Uh, these two just just going through holds like, damn, like like snap, like, it's like going another snap. hold, another hold, another hold, escape, escape, escape. Like these two just cannot get a hold on each other. It's crazy. They just keep reversing and like escaping, and just it's insane the, the how they start this match. Um, it's like oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hardcore technical wrestling match. Like it is just like in in the beginning at least, it's like as as technical as you can get. Like these two put on a clinic uh for technical wrestling, for just technique. Mm-hmm. Uh and does it man does it pick up after that. Uh <laughs> I there's not going to be a lot of me describing spots in this one because I couldn't barely keep up. <laughs> yeah, match like these two hard. It was like eleven minutes, and it was it was it reminded me it, it like gave me like hints of like the um the match we watched a couple weeks ago the uh, Ben Carter and Blake Christian. Oh god, that match! Just was... in terms of how fast it was and how they just flew through spots. And like if you were to describe a spot, it would take like a whole five minutes to describe the thirty seconds it took them to do that spot. <laughs> exactly, because it's like, well, he did this, but then he reversed it with this, and then it was like this. Yeah, it's like. Oh, and then you're out of breath, and then you're like, wait a second, I still have another ten minutes of the match left to go over. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one was insane. Like, this one was absolutely buck, buck wild. Uh, these two, like, really, if, if, it, it was just an outdoor match, but if this, if this place had a roof, it would have been blown off. Like, <laughs> the, it, they, it was just so quick, and their athleticism is unbelievable, and they, the fact that they can move this fast, and also just have that, have the precision and the technical know-how they had in this match while keeping up the pace was nuts. Damn. Um, the the I, the amount of crazy like escapes and like reversals I saw from Yuta in this match, just getting out of different holds that Lee Moriarty had, was nuts. Uh, there's a a really cool spot where uh, Yuta gets up on the top rope mm-hmm. or on the second rope. And he like goes like, huh? Like he's gonna jump and Lee and Lee Moriarty's like, oh no! And <laughs> as he's like, as he's like covering his head, mm-hmm. uh, Yuta goes up to the top and then does a huge crossbody after the oh fake my out. God. <laughs> he like uses the time where where Lee's not looking to just go up another another turnbuckle. <laughs> That's funny. He's just like, ha I am famous. I, I outsmarted you. Yeah, uh, but then Lee kicks out of the pin. Rolls rolls up, stands up, and then hits a big insiguri, and they're both out. 
Of course. Um, but then there's like like this like I said this match happened so fast that the ending just like hits you like at, like out of nowhere, right? Oh really? There, it looks like it looks like they're just doing like a, a normal like rope running spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee goes off the ropes and he jumps at Yuta. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like he's going for like a cross body. Okay. Or like, no, no, no. Okay, here's what happened. It looked like Yuta was gonna go for like a tilt a whirl like backbreaker. Mm-hmm. But instead of doing the backbreaker part, he gets him into like a tombstone position. Damn. Uh he like he like locks his legs in, and he has his head, and he has Lee's head in between his in between his legs, and just yanks backwards on the legs. Ooh. And just, or, I'm sorry, forwards, I guess, since Lee is facing in like yeah. he, literally like a tombstone, right? Mm-hmm. So he just crosses his legs and then just bends his back and just bends him forward. Oh my. God. God. While he's just holding his head, and then Lee taps out to that. that because that, it was one of the most insane <sighs> submissions I've ever seen in my entire life. I was like, what even was that? That's like, that. Holy, that's like, it's like someone. It's could... hard for me to describe. I think, I, I think, I think, I, I, I think you get it. It sounds but like, like someone. It's weird. It's, it's like someone took like the, um, the clover hold hold, you know, where like someone like wraps their legs up with their hand and he pulls back. Except they held, yeah, yeah, yeah. kept their head held between their legs and just yanked that back. Oh. And just and literally, he just like pushed his legs forward, yeah. so his oh. back was just like oh, it was it was brutal yeah, no, looking. No, that's that, that's uh, up there with submissions. So, there, oh, that would that would that would just break me. Yeah, it's no surprise Lee Lee tapped out to that one pretty quick, because uh, it looked it looked absolutely brutal, and uh, Yuta ends up winning this match. Uh, <sighs> this one gets a mark out for me. This one was insane. I know what I'm <laughs> like, watching next week. Like there wasn't yeah, like there wasn't like it wasn't like a crazy mark out where there's like. Oh, it's kick out after kick out after finishing move after finishing move. Mm-hmm. It's just like, just how smooth and how buttery this entire match was. Mm-hmm. At the speed, they were, like I said, the speed, the precision, the technical prowess was everything was just A plus in this match. Definitely gets a mark out from me. Ooh. So, so good. Uh, go check it out if you can. It's free on Beyond Wrestling's YouTube channel Wheeler YouTube versus Lee Moriarty from two weeks' notice. I uh, what a match, honestly. It's ten minutes like I said, it's ten minutes long, but it's just a banger. <laughs> oh, look at that. Damn. Yeah, it was really, really good. Okay. Ne- Alright, uh f- after that mark out, Zach, why don't you take us into your uh your second match of the week? Well, um the second my second match is gonna live up to the mark out grade, but I'll do my best to give you a match that I thought was pretty good. Hey, nothing wrong with pretty good. Mm-hmm. I chose for this week Penelope Ford versus Barbie Hayden at Women's Wrestling Revolution. Ah, another another WWR. Yes, I believe uh, like, like this said match in the happened WWR. in like 2014 or something like that. Mm-hmm. I know it was it's it's like way back because Janella and her were still a thing at the time because of commentary telling yeah. you that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. Gotcha. So, the match starts up with your standard introductions between the two of them before we get into, like, a collar and elbow tie-up between each woman. And it ends mm-hmm. up with Hayden shoving Ford into the corner and then just getting up on the torn buckle and just running her face across, running her arm across for- her elbow, like, across Ford's face before, like, the ref obviously has to get her some space. And I will say before this started, I wasn't sure who was the face and who was the heel here because neither one was super, like, out there. And then that happened. I was like, all right, well, if she's not a heel, I don't know what is. <laughs> so the two then lock if up. If she's a, not the heel, is... <laughs> if she's not the heel, then I hate. I hate to see what the what the what the actual heel is. Then at this point, <laughs> so the two then lock up again. This time Ford actually has the upper hand, getting uh Hayden in this really nice wrist lock and then a headlock, which keeps cinched him for like a good amount of time. At one point, then she even takes her to the ground and like Hayden keeps trying to like yank Ford's hair and like basically like forearm her in the chest to make her let go, but she can't get her like to uh, like can't get her to let go. Mm-hmm. Except, and then when this finally doesn't work and she's had enough of trying this, Hayden then puts Ford in a head scissors hold, right? Okay. And she, like, yanks her, yanks back on her head and, like, she does it so much so that it looks like Ford's head actually gets under her body a bit and her body is forced to arch, like, super high up. Looked mm-hmm. fucking nasty. And I think Oof. that's something similar to that, to the, um, the Priscilla Kelly and, um... I think it's Valkyrie match. No, no, no. Yeah, Valkyrie match that I watched before. And I, all I remember thinking to myself was, God, that looks awful. 
Priscilla Kelly now NXT superstar. Oh, I saw I, I saw that and I was like I was like you know what if she does well in there I'm like good for her. Priscilla sure. Kelly now NXT superstar Gigi Dolan. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of the class there. I remember I saw that. I remember I think it was like the other one was Elena Black. I think was another yeah, one. Yeah, that was that was I didn't see that coming. I Especially was... since she has a match against Janela at Fight Forever coming up. Oh, she does. Oh my god. Yeah, it's her versus Janela. So that like that was weird. Hmm. Huh, interesting. Yeah, which, so I don't know how that's going to work out, but hey, I guess, we'll, yeah. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. All right, so back to this. Uh, Ford eventually gets out of the, uh, get out, gets out of it by the standard, like, you know, like how everyone, they get into, like, a head scissors hole, like, they stand up and they do a handstand and, like, just, like, just very lightly and daintily get out of the heads, the handstand and, like, stand up and the, the person's sitting on the ground, like, all right, well, shit. Yeah, like, oh, come on. Yeah, Ford instead decides to, like, flip out, like, do, like, a, like, you know, like, um, how, like, when someone does, like, a wrist lock, they, like, they do, like, the quick flip forward to get out of the wrist lock. Mm-hmm. That's what Ford does to get out of this. Like, and, where like, they, like, go on, like, their head? Yeah, she did that, basically, Gavin. I, I, that actually caught me by surprise. I was like, oh, shit! And then she's, like, showed him, like, yeah, that was awesome! And Hayden just <laughs> walks up behind her and just grabs her by her hair and just tries to larry at her for this. Just says, no, 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 you're not like, gonna, you're not gonna like, make a fool out of me. Like, what you think you do in showboating when the match is still going on? <laughs> So Ford actually reverses this lariat by um by doing like the matrix duck where like she ducks back and put like you like gets into like a like a crab like walk you know what I'm talking about? It's like a Neo from the Matrix thing, where, like she bends backwards and like goes into like the uh, like the Bray Wyatt crab walk like a uh, spider walk yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. And then she takes Hayden down with the spinning head scissors where she like she spins all the way around the ring and like throws her out. Mm-hmm. Hayden's able to retake control after this though because she uh dodges a splash from from forward in the corner when she's recuperating and then hits her with a huge power slam with hayden okay. in control at this point now she just starts to just beat the shit out of forward <laughs> and just yanks her hair down while doing so and eventually the ref tells her to like stop yanking her hair and she's like oh i'm so sorry and then immediately just gra- like forms forward in the oh, face no, and goes so back sorry. to beating her up yeah it's really like that's like oh no i'm so sorry and looks at forward and just wham back in the face <laughs> just right in the face the pure sarcasm I love it. Sassy ass heels doing sassy things. <laughs> sassy heels doing sassy heels. I can't talk right now. I'm doing <laughs> sassy heels shit. <laughs> exactly. So next up, Hayden then puts Ford in a, another ch- uh, hold. This time she uses her arms to choke her out while she has her knee applied to her back. And towards mm-hmm. the end of this where she has it, she starts to really just yank Ford back like uncomfortably far backwards to the point where her like chest is just all the way back into like it's making like kind of like an end shape. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, God, I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Ford takes a lot of fucking punishment in this match. Like, yeah, it sounds like it. Really, like, just holds her. I was like, wow, she's just letting this happen. And, sounds, yeah, it sounds like she took a beating this, I mean, um, this time around. Yeah, I mean, like, when I think about the stuff I've seen in AW, you know, I'm still not caught up. I'm not too surprised when I think about it in hindsight. So, like, Ford's taking some nasty bumps, and she's done some intergender matches, too. So, she's, she knows what's up. I saying. watched uh, I watched a hardcore match with uh, Janella and someone who shall not be named. Ah, uh, I... and she took she took a pretty big a pretty big bump through a, a barbed wire table. Ooh. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, he's a table only. Oh no! She's she she she's tough. Yeah, she is. Getting into this again right after that. Uh, remember that sleeper I said where she bent her backwards. Mm-hmm. So as she still bent like a pretzel, Hayden's like, you know what? Let's just use this, and she just puts her in a dragon sleeper. Mm-hmm. And she's just raining down forearms onto Ford's chest while this is happening, and I'm just like, God, this woman just can't catch a break. Yeah. She then like releases the hold, and starts to choke Ford out in the ropes, and while she's doing that, when she's done doing that, she just hits her with a running knee to the back of her head, and then a jumping knee onto her chest, like as she's like laying on the ground, like, she jumps up using the ropes, knees her on the chest, and it, Ford mm-hmm. like just is just out, it, like she's just <laughs> she's exhausted at this point, but the crowd starts to fire up at this point. They're, like, chanting for Ford to make a comeback. So Hayden just continues to just, on her offense, just beating Ford up. She picks her up. Ford attempts to counter an Irish with a crucifix bomb, but Hayden just catches her and then rams her back into the corner, like, back first. Except it looks like she hits her head on her the back of her head into the ring post when she hits this. And commentary was pretty sold, and he's like, yep, no, that's a that's a sound I'll hear in my nightmares for her hitting her head on the post. And I was like, Jesus, Oof. God. I was like, oof, Why? And if you thought Yikes. that was any ba- that was bad, it, the punishment just keeps coming for Ford. 
As she's recovering from this in the corner, Hayden hits her with a running knee, gets up on the top ropes, balances herself on it. Okay. Puts forward another head scissors, except once she's done with that, because she can't submit Ford obviously in the corner with this because she's using the ropes to hold this. She mm. then just spikes her head onto the head onto the mat from this head scissors. Oh. And I was just like, ouch. I was like, Jesus. damn. Hayden then like hits a drop kick on Ford. At what point do you just start feeling bad for Ford? I did, and I was like, man, <laughs> like, I really Oh hope... man. I mean, she did a good job. Like her she was selling it really well, and Hayden was being a really like just an awful heel, and I was like, alright, I'm like, I really want to see Ford win this. And she did her job. <laughs> well, and she got me into it, which is what's supposed to happen. I want I should want to see the babyface win. Mm. And eventually Ford rolls out of the ring, gets on the apron, as she's recovering, Hayden just kinda like tackles her and just knocks her onto the apron. Nice. So as Ford's getting into the ring, she's been beat up so much at this point. And Hayden goes and like grabs her <laughs> by her head, drapes her over the top ropes. It looks like she's about to DDT her, and the announcer's like, "Oh come on, no, not again on her head, man! Come on, not again!" <laughs> and Ford actually is able to get out of it and almost rolls her up for the win with this, but um, Hayden gets out of it, and Ford immediately jumps back on her because at this point she realizes, I assume, that she's just gonna get her ass kicked even more if she doesn't stop her from just beating the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. I just love the announcer just being like, oh, not again. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Please stop. Show mercy. So Ford fights uh, Hayden for control of this match and gets her in a position for a German. But Hayden is just too strong and too stubborn to let this happen. So Ford decides, you know what? I'll just beat her up from behind and knock her to the ground, which she does successfully. <laughs> you know what? I'll just beat her up. Hayden then hits Ford with a clothesline, but Ford doesn't let this stop her. And she delivers a series of, sif- of stiff kicks where she kicks Hayden in her ribs. And then when she goes to cover with her arm, she kicks her in the arm again. And it's like a... It's like a Daniel Bryan esque kick where it's like, ouch, that's ow. <laughs> Probably didn't feel too good. Mm-hmm. And then she just gives a stiff series of chops to Hayden's chest in the corner. Look, the, I was like, well, she's got her payback after the torturous, uh, not the torture, after the um the gauntlet of submissions she's been put through in this match. Mm-hmm. Ford runs at her in the corner, but Hayden elbows her in the face. Only for Ford to actually be able to like roll Hayden up when she goes for when she goes to like trying to pick tries to like um so where I'm looking for here she tries to advance on this but she gets almost rolled up and she okay. the way I put how do I describe this I just really what the spot is she goes to roll her up and she does like the thing where she throws them headfirst into the turnbuckle you know what I mean like she like for the roll up yes. sequence like she pulls them into the turnbuckle oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah that okay. I realized I gotcha. midway through what this was in my th- in my notes here because I I, wrote, I I write brief notes when I uh, look at these matches to remember these mm-hmm. and uh, this leads to the finish where Ford actually is able to hit her signature handspring elbow to Hayden in the corner and then follows it up with a handspring off the ropes into a cutter for the win hey Penelope Ford after all that punishment stuff finally got top. a win and I will say I like this I enjoyed this match quite a bit I liked also how one thing I didn't note in this match that I should probably know is the commentary was really bigging up how Ford was like this is one of, like, her, like, she didn't have Janela to, around, and to, at this point in time, Janela was, like, a big influence in how she, like, did her match. Like, he would, like, tell her, like, what he, she should do. He was there, to, and he was in her corner. Mm-hmm. And this was, like, a match where she didn't have Janela's backup. She was just her. So she, like, commentary was, like, she's really gonna have to dig in and see if she can, like, you know, pull out a win. And she did, and Hayden was furious when she lost, because, you know, if you're dominating 75% of this match, and then the baby face just hits you with their finisher and wins, I'd be pretty pissed off, too. Oh, yeah, it's almost like it's, it's almost like the match I uh, said that was first. Actu- that uh... was what I was thinking. I was like, two in the same promotion, yeah, same, similar attitudes for the heels at the end. She even with slapped... Ellering and Skyler, yeah. Yep, she even slapped her hand away. She's like, don't even look at me. She walked out of the ring, didn't acknowledge... <laughs> she's like, look at the crowd, like, don't, don't fucking touch me. me. That was bullshit. I should have won that. Yikes. I want to give this match a high meh. High meh? Okay. It's a good match. I think what puts it up above me is I was going to give this match a meh. It's just the fact that, like, I just really like the selling from Ford and just Hayden. Like, the two of them did a really good job of, like, really painting this picture of, like, a valiant baby face coming back from this dominating force of a heel. Yeah. All right. And I commentary like that. with that extra just flavor onto it of how she was trying to, how, like, how she was going out on her own this time was just nice. Was, like, going a nice, out on her own, yeah. It's nice, a nice flavor, a nice little, like, um, nice little, that's what I'm looking for, like, finishing touch to it, I guess. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, high mess for me. Two high mess for me, I think. Nice. Nice. Not, 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 a, bad, not a bad, not, not a bad, not a bad week. week. As long as I don't get a miss out, I'm fine. Which, uh, I don't, th- I don't think you're gonna, because now, we're gonna talk about the match we both watch, which I am very <sighs> excited about. We watched a match from Riptide Wrestling. God bless Riptide Wrestling. We- 
we watched Gene Money taking on uh, Rishi Ghosh. Rishi Goshi. What? What is this match was something? Oh, it is Ghosh. I'm a dumbass, but uh, this match was Rishi Ghosh. Uh, this I... this match was so funny. This match is hilarious. It's so good. This is okay. So it, it's a preface. This this is a comedy match. Like, oh this yeah. Is, this is absolutely 100 percent a comedy match. Uh, it's it was really good. I really liked it. I really liked how in the beginning they had that whole exchange. Yeah. Basically, they I like they they basically did the build and the match yep. all in the ring. Like, like, oh my god! Like they get into the ring, they like money does his entrance, Ghost does his entrance, and like they get in, and the first thing that comes out of Ghost's mouth is, "You know what you did." <laughs> and money's like, "Listen, I'm sorry." He's like, "It's like you know I love panto matches." So what why is that? A panto match? What's a I, combat panto match? All right, so I actually looked at what a panto is. Like, let me read you what Wikipedia says it is. A panto is a tip is a type of musical comedy stage production designed for family entertainment that was developed in England and performed throughout the United Kingdom. <laughs> so what is a combat panto match? A combat panto match, from what I can assume, is like a comedy, a musical comedy wrestling match. And the funny part is the match is actually on Riptide Wrestling's YouTube channel because I found it. Interesting. And it's a long match too. It's like a long it's match. It? It's a pretty long match compared to like this match. It's like it was a G Money match though. This is true. Yeah. Okay. And like it's a they're all dressed in like Christmas outfits. I think too. It was wow. So yeah, apparently Ghost, the guy in charge, the guy, uh, the heel of this match, was like is a really big fan of these, and he felt really offended that Money <laughs> didn't didn't have him included in this match. Yeah, they went from being like friends and like smiling to like like i said the build the build for this match and the match was all in the ring <laughs> like literally like, yeah like at one point i think money's like well I, you know what i found a horse back there we can make a panto match happen with the horse somehow and eventually <laughs> ghost is like no it's not christmas and he's like we can do an easter one and the crowd starts chanting like easter panto he's like no easter panto that doesn't exist no <laughs> and eventually though the match does get underway when ghost pushes money Money bounces off the ro- off the ropes and <laughs> shoulders <laughs> Ghost and Ghost is like, oh, what you want to go? And they just have this spot where the ma- the bell rings at this point where he's just he shoulder charges Money. Money gets bounced off the ropes, shoulder charges him, and the two of them are just hitting each other. You're forgetting the best part where where every time Money did a shoulder block yep. to Ghost, Money just apologized. He's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> every time Money hit one, he was like, I'm sorry. I was dying, and then the be- and then my favorite part right at the end of this spot. Money's like, you know what? I've had enough of this. And he, tur- he walks out of the way and Ghost just jumps over the top rope <laughs> and just mm-hmm. flies out of the ring. <laughs> yep. I was like, this match is already amazing. Eventually, yeah. Ghost then gets <laughs> him. He's like, you're an idiot. I don't want anything to do with you right now. And Money's like, oh, come on. I'll do the spot where I have to follow you around the ring. And he just follows him around the ring. He's like, go <laughs> away. Like, I'm not doing the spot where I chase you. I'm not. As he's chasing him. Like, I love how this whole match, Ghost is just the most over-exaggerated, like, cartoonishly evil dude, but not as, like, you would expect him to be like he's he was, just you, you know what he reminded me of it, it was like ghost was like an angry girlfriend ghost yes. was like gene money's angry like like life partner is what it felt like yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay, god he was just like he's like i don't even want to talk to you right now stop no and, he, and, and money's like come on please like uh, come, let's just come on i'm sorry exactly and then she's like nope nope you're an idiot i'm not even dealing with this Oh my god, there's oh, so the, many... The... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, there's so many funny spots in this match that I can yeah. just go through. Uh, yeah, there was there was the one point where after after Gene is done chasing uh, Ghost around, Ghost gets back in the ring, and Gene's like, listen, I'm going to get back in the ring now, no funny business, okay? And then immediately after he says that, he turns to the camera and just winks. Like, does like the over-exaggerated, like, <laughs> wink. Oh, love it. And then Gene goes to get in, and Ghost goes after him. He's like, hey, hey, that's funny business. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I think he, like, he hits the ring. He, mi- he misses the, th- the attack on him, and he goes, that wasn't funny business. Oh, and then there was the spot where they keep trying to hip toss each other, but can't and just, like, go around the ring. And they're like, huh? Oh, my huh? God. They literally go huh? the whole, they <laughs> go on the like, whole ring the entire time. Hip tosses. And then, like, <laughs> eventually, Rishi's like, ha-ha, and he, fuck, he close punches money in the ch- in the gut. And he's like, you're an idiot. 
And then money just arm drags him. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. Th- there was one point where uh, Rishi gets a two count on Gene money, and Gene kicks out, and then Rishi just sits there and just goes, I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's just, he's literally just, like, he kicks out, and he's like, I can't believe it. Like, he's just so, like, it wasn't even, like, it wasn't even, like, that flabbergasted. It was just so, like, my, he was like, I can't believe it. Oh, I loved it so much. He was just much. so, like, he was just so annoyed. He was like, ugh. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, what what else is there? Uh, let's <laughs> there's see. so many things. There's so many things happening in this let's match. See. What's a... <laughs> this is all so funny. Oh my god. Uh... Let's see. Uh... Oh, there's one. I remember a spot. There's a point in this match where Money makes a comeback after Rishi's kind of like really like kind of like hit him with a um like I think he's like out of like a headlock and he's him with like an upper a running uppercut or something like that. And he's like choked him out in the cr- on like the ring rope and he's like pointing him to the crowd. He's like, get closer to your friends. They're all your friends, aren't they? And mm-hmm. so money sets up for a lariat, right? And they are your friends, aren't yeah. they? He's and and money's like, I yeah, I like most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, money at this point gets up to his feet, and Rishi runs at him when he's in the corner. He gets his feet up, goes to the outside, hits an enormous slingshot. He then hits a clothesline, throws Rishi to the corner, hits another clothesline, and then it's a high knee to a spine buster. And when he goes to pin him. He, like, very lazily just lays on top of him and, like, lifts his leg up. And when he kicks out of it, he's like, terrible pin. Don't even know how that was going to win it. And I, that just made me die, like, just laugh. Because it was he just, like, a... admits it. He's like, yeah, you're here. He's like, oh, yeah, that was bad. That was a bad part. pin. Damn. Stupid. I was just like, it's such an awful pin. And he just blatantly was like, yeah, that was terrible. And it just, like, <laughs> just made me laugh. Oh, my God. Fucking meta humor. Anyway. Oh, there was a bu- Then I, I think we get to the end here. We're like, money this whole match has been setting up for this lariat. And he almost hits it on Ghost here. As Ghost turns around and Ghost gets on his knees, he's like, I'm so sorry. And the two argue again of like, all right, you know, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. And then Money's like, no, we're both <laughs> we're sorry. We're both sorry. <laughs> so Rishi tries to then get a cheap shot by punching Money in his dick. But Money catches him by his hand and says, you don't punch my penis before punching him in the jaw and almost knocking him out. No. Just, <laughs> and then he was like, no, 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 that was a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> Punches him in the face, almost knocks him down. Oh my god, like, I think there's just, money then like, eventually, um it ends up getting on the top rope after fighting with, um, Rishi in the corner and Rishi then hits this really cool, like, stunner off him off the top rope that called the Ghost Train which okay. doesn't get the win so when he does, he goes like, alright, Ghostbuster time like, he says something like this super Ghostbuster I can't do, time I can't do it justice to how he says it, cause how he exasperates everything is just so funny to me and then okay. Money gets out of it. Rishi tries to boot him, but gets taught on the top rope. And then Money just picks him up by one arm and then does a one-armed powerbomb on him. And mm-hmm. he thinks he's going to pin him, but then he goes, ah! Throws him <laughs> off of him, gets up, and then hits him with a lariat and wins off of that. Yep. And yep. Re- it goes looks so sad. Money's music hits, which I forgot the theme of this, what this actual theme is, but it's like a fucking, I forgot what Money's actual theme is, but it's awesome. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Fucking great. The, uh, this is even meant, com- uh, mentioning the fact that the Riptide people have a bunch of like subtitles in, so you'll catch everything they say, which is I always, which I appreciate greatly, by the way. Cause sometimes you miss the banter between people in the ring, and it yeah, it's it was sad. very good. There's Riptide, a- like, like we, we, we always talk about it. Riptide's production value is just at, like off the wall. Oh, it was great. It's so good. It's so good. Oh my god! Like there was a point where like they're coming to the ring, Ghost enters the ring, and like the guy who did the stuff has like mild applause. Money comes in, it's like passionate applause. <laughs> I, I, didn't even, I didn't even notice that. I loved it so much. I was like, the guy at Riptide to be stuffed out had a good time. Catch that. Amazing. That's really funny. Oh my god, I loved it. Dude, going to this match, I didn't even know who either guy was. So like Ghost put up this like promo of like it's like, oh it's, I'm like, oh, it's just gonna be like a blood feud type thing. And when he no. And then Gene Money's entrance happened where he stuck his leg out and I was like, what? In the and then he came out into the ring and did his entrance and I was just like, I wasn't expecting that at all. And Gene I Money love this is match. So this is match such, is so funny. Was fucking hilarious. I can't do <laughs> so good. I can't do the justice of each guy's delivery of their lines, nor how they did the physical gags. To I can't yeah. do it justice. Like I love the I love this match. Just just these two are just like it was just pure chemistry between these two guys. Like they so really funny. like they they you could tell they've con- they've worked with each other before, mm-hmm. and it was just they put on just such a good. Like, they were just so hilarious. 
uh, I together. Love this, match. and they put on such a great match. Just like in terms of comedy, okay, we're not rating this on the same scale as like a Do Fixer versus Blood Generation. Oh yeah, no, this that's... is in terms of like comedy matches. This is really good, and I... I think for as a comedy match, it gets a mark out. Gets a mark out from me, but for those of you listening, Mikey Hero for me is like the king of comedy matches. So I love really comedy matches. Out, I love is, that's comedy a pretty wrestling. high braid right there. Comedy wrestling is so good in terms like. For a comedy wrestling match, this is a mark out. Like mm-hmm. this, this, this made me laugh almost as much as what my favorite comedy match of all time, which is Gentleman Jervis versus Orange Cassidy. That match is so good. Uh, yeah, it is. That match rules. Uh, that's one of my favorite comedy matches. Probably my favorite comedy match of, of all time. And this was definitely up there. Uh, because these two just knocked it out of the park, and it was so so funny. They were. I don't know, like like you said, it was just like the the delivery, the the timing, the physical comedy, everything just like just worked. Mm-hmm. They really just did a, a really awesome job, and I I was dying, like I was like cracking up watching this match, and yeah, for for that, like uh, it just it gets a mark out because I I enjoyed it so much. I loved it. I literally was dying. I like I I was dying at some point. There were points where I literally. The first, like the first opening bits of this match, when I didn't know what to expect, I was just, I was, I was like, "This is amazing." I don't like, remember the last time Riptide has disappointed me. <laughs> I have not had a time when it has disappointed me yet. I hope they keep that up. So far, they have. <laughs> um. So what? What was? You, I gave it a mark out. I don't think I heard your rating for this I, one. I believe I said it as you were. Uh, I think I said it as you said it too. I also gave it a mark out. For me, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, just great. like as like like I said, it's not it's not like the same mark out we usually give matches. It's mm-hmm. just like in, in terms of comedy matches, it's a very yeah. good comedy match. It also helps that on this show I've watched many more comedy matches, so I know I, I I now know at least I think I now know the distinct difference between a good comedy match and like uh for me at least a good comedy match and a not so good comedy match or not as yeah. well executed as comedy match. I guess so- is a better way of putting it. So if you like to laugh during your wrestling, uh, go check this one out. It's over on Riptide's YouTube channel. It's so fun, so so good. Uh, very much worth 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 the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go check it out. Gene Money versus Rishi Ghosh uh, from Riptide. So so funny. Uh, okay, well that is all of our matches this week. So that brings us to the double down. The double down. It's now time to find out if the match was, you know, actually good or bad. I don't know. It's time for the Double Down. This is the segment of the show where me and Zach flash back to last week and take a look at matches from each other's perspectives. Uh, Zach, why don't you kick us off with the Double Down because my throat hurts. (laughs) Yeah, okay. I'm down for that. All right. You gave me Jimmy Lloyd versus Oren Vate or Vite at H2O Wrestling. Right, the death match. The light tube match. Yeah. This match was an extravaganza of blood and glass, which is about what I was expecting for this match. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Uh, I I mean, you already went through a lot of these spots, but I'll go through some of the stuff that I thought of this match that was good. I, the first spot where Vite goes through the glass was basically how you described it. He went into the glass face first and went, ooh, that looked like it sucked. And I looked and I was like, okay, he's not too bad. And then like two seconds later, his arm is just fucking ripped. It's like, where did that come from? It's like, oh, shit, that is just okay. <laughs> I also then realized how dangerously close everyone in the crowd was, and I was like, y'all bet must have wanted some glass in your face or something like that, because that's... <laughs> you know, you no, know, you know who had, you know who had, like, the soul read and, like, the, sh- the, 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 like, the, the secret strat? Who? That kid in the front with the full zip-up hoodie. Yeah, I saw that the kid... With the hit- hood that even zipped, I was like, that's the tech! Dude, there's like a piece of glass I think that hit him in the like his hood thing, and I was like, "That kid, you smart, you are smart." That's the, that was the that was the big brain play that mm, day, uh, going into a front row in a death match. Oh my god! Let's see, what's another spot? The kid, really... the kid woke up, looked in the mirror, and went, "This is what you call a pro gamer move." <laughs> oh, love I I love memes, and I love when memes like explode memes. <laughs> Especially that one. I can just hear him say that in my head. This is what I call a pro gamer. It just zips the hoodie all the way up. Now I'm thinking Markiplier is saying it's big brain time now. Yeah, it's big brain time. <laughs> it's another one. <laughs> anyway, back to the match. All right. I was actually really impressed with how well executed a lot of these spots were. Like, one of them that I really liked was when uh, Vate, Vite, I keep thinking it's Vate, but I'm pretty sure it's Vite. 
It's Vite, yeah. Vite did, like, this DDT on Lloyd from the apron onto three light tubes head first, and he actually hit all three light tubes, like, Jimmy Lloyd's head on all three light tubes. I remember thinking to myself, Nailed it. <laughs> Damn, that is a really high margin for error, especially because there's three light tubes, and that's it. And, like, granted, you probably would have broken them on your back, but still, the fact you mm-hmm. did it. It's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, it was pretty good. Like, like they, they were they were pretty uh pretty pinpoint accurate yeah. with their moves in this one. Like I, uh one thing I will say is that while the, while the spots didn't always work as intended, sometimes I did appreciate they tried to get creative with light tubes for this match, and not yeah. just hitting each other over the head because I've seen matches where like the gimmick match is like a chair match, and like I've seen like a instance where it wasn't very creative, and one where it was like, oh, all right, they actually set the chairs up. So when they started putting the, the light tubes on each other's, like, chests and hitting them, I, like, it didn't always pop, but I was like, when it worked, I was like, you know what? That's awesome. I like that. I'll take it. Nice. Simple. I'm a, I'm a simple man. I, I like that. I'm a, I'm a simple man. I like creative uses of light tubes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, of, yeah, it was it was solid. Of course, I would be reminiscent to not talk about the insane chair spot where Lloyd hit the spitting neckbreaker onto Vite onto the chair he was standing on. Oh yeah, that was Fucking sweet. Awesome. Love that shit. I thought this was one of the many points where I realized how much Vite was bleeding for this match. Because I remember when Vite entered this ring and I saw his tights were white, I was like, oh boy, those are going to be pink when this match is over. And I was not wrong. Mm-hmm. This man's arm I love- was literally red at the end of this match. I love when deathmatch wrestlers wear like all white. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then they come out and they're 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 all red. He didn't have a shirt on either. Like Lloyd was all like geared up, had like knee pads, pant- boots. Shorts. He had a shirt on, and like this, mm-hmm. and then Vite just showed up. And he's like, "I'm gonna do this bare chest with white pants." That's also a that's a, that that's like a coming into a death match with with no shirt on is like a flex, right? It's yeah. like that that's like showing your opponent, like, "Yeah, do whatever you want." Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, who? <whoo, laughs> oh, that's yeah. a tough person right there. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of punishment. Vite then immediately took a burning hammer rib first onto two set-up chairs right after this spot. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, you just, <laughs> you're just dying for this match. Yeah, Vite, Vite went all out for this one. Vite yeah, took some uh, crazy bumps. Yes, he did. Let's see. Let's think of, let's put up another spot up here that I like, that I really like for this match. Vite goes to set up for the usual monkey flip spot where, like, he has um, Lloyd on, like, he has, he's got his, their hands intertwined. He picks him up by his feet. And then he just flip gets up flips and does a canadian destroyer to lloyd and then i love how as he's like yeah that was awesome lloyd just kind of gets up like the undertaker in like the match flips him yep. off and then just hits him with a light tube drag assisted dragon suplex in homage to danny havoc that was that was sweet that was a really good looking spot one of the examples of the light tube where i was like see that is a really good use of a light tube and it was executed well though i'm pretty sure vite's head went a little bit too far back on the on the uh on the mat and i was like oh you <laughs> <laughs> That is some dangerous stuff. That was close. That was close. You you just grazed it there. So now that you mentioned that, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about how that's one thing that almost took me out of this match a little bit was Jimmy Lloyd constantly rolling through moves. Oh, yeah. That is true, yeah. I remember thinking to myself at the end of this match, I'm like, this is a very Jimmy Lloyd-dominated uh, match. Yeah, I feel like there was parts where it was like, okay, Jimmy, you could you could have stayed down for that one. Probably. Probably like that's there was the like there was a spot where he takes like the DVD onto the chairs, rolls mm-hmm. through, and then hits hit Vite with the the burning, burning hammer. hammer onto the chairs. Yeah, it was like it was like all right, listen, Jimmy, this man, this man's You're dying great, here. But like you gotta, he's dying for you. You gotta die for him too. I you mean, gotta help him out a little bit. Speaking of which, was spot that Jimmy probably didn't love to take the spot was when uh Vite hit the uh the running assault driver into the corner of light tubes onto Jimmy. Yeah. gnarly. That was another point in this match where I realized, oh my god, there's literally glass stick- sticking on his arm because of how much blood he's uh, got- is on him right now. Like, there was there blood was literally. Like, everywhere. if you saw blood on this match, it was very likely Vites. Might have yeah. been a bit of Jimmy's, but mostly was Vites. It was mostly Vites, yeah. Like, he was bleeding from that shoulder I real shit bad. you not, there's a point in the match where his arm is just red. So there's yeah. not even like, like, it's like, oh, it's cut open. It's like, no, it's just a red arm now. It's yeah, it's wild. He, he that first light tube spot really messed him up. Yeah, it did, and he didn't help himself with all the other spots along with the finish, where he took the True. goddamn inverted power slam into a pile driver off the top rope through the barbed wire table. Wall with, with was had uh with which had <laughs> saw Arizona, Arizona green tea Arizona cans. Green tea cans on a table, which was a door too. Yeah, that was 
Like, I've seen a lot of things in Deathmatch Wrestling. The, the cut in half Arizona green tea cans was a that new was one. a new one for me. I also uh, it was really nice too. It went off without a hitch. Like the table just broke right through. Barbed wire went across. Didn't get caught in anyone's arm. It's yeah, good. I will say though there were some spots here that didn't like hit or almost botch like that tombstone you talked about, which I was mm. like, I, which yeah, that, like, that was like oh yeah, I mean like, yeah, I was like oof, but you could tell the two of them were really trying their damnedest to put on a good show, mm-hmm. and so like. Yeah, props to them, especially Vite though. For me, like I was like, I I came out of this match thinking to myself, damn, Vite's a fucking Vite fucking died for this match. I <laughs> I watched another Vite match honestly, just because this man put so he went through so much pain that he did not need to go through. Yeah, Vite, probably Vite took Vite took a beating. He probably could have taken the light tube spot and like the chair spot and been done, but instead he was like, nah, put me through that table, dude. Yeah, Vite was like, kill me. Exactly. Overall, though, I like this match. I give this match a high mech, because I feel like I've seen better death matches. I mean, yeah. I mean, one cup that comes to mind for me is the Matt Tremont match at the Collective that we watched. I love that match. That match was bonkers. Was bonkers, and also had a lot of light tubes, too. Absolutely insane. Yeah, it was a good match. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was that was Tremont's last match, right? That's it was, why it was at so GCW, good. It was, that a, was, it was his, a big uh, retirement match. That was his retirement match for uh, GCW, I believe. Man, we watched those. We watched those guys go off of the out of the stands through doors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. That was it. Was a really that match was insane. That was a great match. Yeah, that was also a great match. Two jerseys. You want to you want to hear more about that? Go check out the the Independent Waters episode from the Collective Mizak did Mizak oh, did yeah, featuring um, Ryan Knightsey from Hit the Books. Yeah, and if you want, you can watch the vlog to hear our immediate thoughts right after that match. Yeah, uh, it's on our YouTube channel, uh, countoutpod.com. Ah, yes. Good times when you come up with your friends at, like, 2 in the morning after watching two men almost kill themselves with light tubes and barbed wire. And, and then we had a whole other show after that! Yeah, we did. <laughs> hey. uh, good night. Good All night. right. Uh, yeah, so let's... Let, uh, I'm gonna get it. Let's get into my double down match. You gave me uh, Marcella versus La Ampola. La ah, Ampola. Ampola. From, yes, I remember from, this match. Uh, Ring of Honor. I'm curious to see what you thought of this match. Honestly, I... I don't have much to say, uh, mostly because, like, A, because we talked about that last one for so long, yeah, and B, because there, for me, it wasn't really anything mind-blowing or exciting or, like, crazy spots to talk about. Mm. This match was just some good, classic wrestling. Mm. Like, yeah. it was, like, a classic wrestling match, you know? Like, it was a lot of the fundamentals, a lot, like, some good chain wrestling, some 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 interesting spots here and there. No, like I said, nothing crazy mind blowing though. Nothing like absolutely blew me away that like mm-hmm. that I really like was like, oh man, I need to talk about that. There was like none of that. Mm. Um, it was like a good, just a good old fashioned lucha match. Is I what it felt like. Correctly, the thing I really liked about this match was a the crowd. Yes, the, the crowd, crowd was, was hot. And B, I I think I remember if I'm right thinking this, remember this correctly. Because of how their ages, I was just sitting there, like, sitting to myself thinking, damn, for that age, for you to pull off that move that well, that's, for me, that was impressive. At least that's how I think I recall. I I was. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, impre- like I said, it was impressive. Like they said, did a good job. It was a good match. There was nothing classic. wrong with the match. Like I said, it was just a classic, good wrestling match. Like, they yeah, did a lot oh, no. of good, just, old, like, old spots, like, just just want to make sure very... I was remembering that correctly. My bad. Though. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, you're good. Uh, it's just like it was just like the roots, you know, like the, like mm-hmm. those re- like those wrestling roots is what like came out. Yeah, is what it felt like this match, and uh, you know, it was good. Like it was, it wasn't, it was not terrible. There was no like insane botches to talk about. Like you Thank said, God. it was a little slow, but that's understandable. Yeah. Uh, they're like you, there was definitely sp- parts where you could see them getting ready for the next spot. Oh yeah. Uh, but it, it was it was good nonetheless. They still put on a good a good show. I'm just gonna give this one a meh, just like easy. Yeah, just like right in the middle. Yeah, it's like right. not. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't mind blowing. Yeah, I think it was fine. Yeah, I believe I had the same feeling for it. And I think I gave it the. I feel like I either gave it the meh or I gave it the high meh, just because I was like, I'll give it for them for the crowd and just the fact that the two of them put up a good match. And I w- I wasn't expecting as good of a match from the two of them, just from appearance points of view. Yeah, that's fair. Um, a certain mainstream production that's called WWE has scarred me on what old certain can do. mainstream production. <laughs> I've been I've been scarred to see older people put on matches where I was like, "Ooh, you, mm, ha, 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 you should be wrestling right now." Goldberg, what? Oh, where's that? Who was that? 
Mm, I didn't see anything. No, no, it wasn't. No, I wasn't referencing any particular bald guy. Anyway, oh, not at all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, that's that's the double down. That about wraps it up for the show. Uh, we now now it's time for the plugs. All of right. course, come on, you got this, dude. You got this. <sighs> all right, let me stretch it out first. Here we go. So. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for listening. Uh, you can t- remember to da- go give the go give this episode a five star rating over on iTunes. It helps the podcast like ourselves grow and get to more audiences. We would love to hear what you guys think about the show. And if you want to share your thoughts with us and the world in ge- and the wrestling world and the world in general, go follow us on Twitter over at Count Out Pod, where we just share basically all of our thoughts going ha- ha- going through our heads. Uh, or stuff that's happening in the wrestling world, blah, blah, blah. You can interact with us. And you can also vote in the polls for our show that happens every Friday called Hit the Books, where me and Ryan Knightsey uh, book SmackDown and Raw every week. We are ever we are inching ever closer to, the, to our Royal Rumble pay-per-view special, uh, so go check it out over there. We're very excited. That's going to be a great pay-per-view. I'm super excited for that, uh, to book that. Uh, and every Thursday as well, go check out How to Talk to Your Friends About Wrestling, our new show here on the Count Out Network. Amanda and Ashley go over uh, all things wrestling. And uh, their most recent episode, they did a book report on Randy Savage, so go check that out uh, when you get the chance. Very informative, very cool. Uh, you're going to love that show as well. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak in a little personal plug here. Uh, go check out twitch.tv slash, slash sigiled skyfish. I uh, started streaming recently. I've been doing a Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke, so if you're into that, go check that out over at twitch.tv slash sigiled skyfish. And back to the back to the podcast plugs. Go check out countoutpod.com for everything that has to do with the Countout Network, uh, what, what, whether it's shows, uh, if you want to learn a little bit about us, the hosts of the shows, uh, everything everything that has to do with the Countout Network is on that website, so go check it out over there. And go check out our YouTube channel, which we mentioned a little earlier, so I won't get too deep into that. Uh, Countout, po- Countout Wrestling Podcast Network over on YouTube. We have a ton of video content over there that I think you'll love. I think that's everything. Oh, go check out G1 and Only every other Monday, Ryan's uh, show about the G1 Supercard, uh, where he talks about people who have been in the G1 Supercard one time and one time only. Uh, his most recent episode features Buff Bagwell, and um, oh, what was it? Fake Razor Ramon. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it, his new his new episode features Buff Bagwell. If you're into if you're into the G1 Supercard, go check that out. Uh, very cool, very documentary style uh podcast. Uh, you go go learn yourself a thing about Japan wrestling, Japanese wrestling, and the people involved. I think I think you'll really like that. Okay, now that's all the plugs out of the way. Zach, you got anything, bud? Nope. <laughs> Didn't think so. Let's close out the show with by saying, remember, there's a gigantic sea of independent wrestling out there. So never stop exploring. Oh.